What's going on guys? This video we're gonna be working on this C5 Corvette here. It's pro charged, it's cammed, and it still has the stock engine mounts and transmission mount. And I believe they're also probably original to the car, which is 138,000 miles. So what I have over here is some used components, but still in good shape. So we've got, uh, I believe, Hinson engine mounts. And I went ahead and purchased the heat shields for them because we do have headers on the car. So I purchased the actual official heat shielding for them. So it's gonna look like that installed. These ones, if you guys do or don't know, they come in two different lengths. They come in stock or standard height and then also 3 8 shorter. Originally, I was gonna go ahead and get the stock height, but I figured I wanted the 3 8 shorter ones because I can always shim them up. Some guys will run a series of washers to bring them up to stock height. But also having the shorter ones, apparently there's different intake manifolds and we might end up putting one on there where you want the lower engine so that you can actually clear on the cowl or whatnot on the back. So that's why I chose to go with the shorter ones because I can always make them higher if I want to. One of the caveats with going with the shorter ones, some guys complain of the engine or the bat wing on the oil pan actually touching the leaf spring when the vehicle is suspended. So kind of the pros and cons of the shorter and taller ones. This here is our transmission mount. You can see here it's got two points of contact and it's gonna pivot in the middle. Uh, whereas the factory one, I believe just goes here. So this one gives you a bigger span for kind of torque management of your drivetrain twisting in the chassis. So again, used piece, good condition though. So let's go ahead. We got the vehicle on the lift. Let's get to work. All right, so stock engine mounts with a supercharger I don't think it's supposed to be sitting as low as it is. We've got the engine sitting right on the leaf spring or the mono leaf, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know if it's just cause that's the way this setup is, but everybody complains about that touching that. And I'm on stock mounts. So these mounts have definitely seen better days. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna remove that. It's gonna be fun. Not much room, especially with these headers. Let's get after it. So if you guys are gonna do this, I've got the rear supported with this support stand because the car is 50-50 weight. So I don't wanna be relieving the weight of the engine from the front while it's on the hoist, cause that would not be a good time. So we've got this one that we're gonna relieve the engine weight and then that one to support it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys the progress. All right, so we are underway on this. I'm gonna show you guys the way I'm doing it. I don't know if other people do it the same way, but I watched another video. Somebody took the intake manifold completely off, which seemed like way too much work than I wanted to do today. But what I did do, or me and Dennis did, right? So, yeah. Yes, me. Me and Dennis, so. mostly me, some Dennis, some Dennis, really mostly me, I don't know. We don't know what the balance of work was, but <laughs> we ended up <laughs> disconnecting the shock because that limits dropping the K-member. We disconnected the upper A-arm bolts uh, swung our sway bar out of the way so we could get to this and then we lowered it to the bottom of the threads there so we're still full thread on the nut there but you can see we got like half inch on the cradle and then rather than trying to lift the engine into oblivion what we did was we took out the three bolts we went right through here one two here with the swivel and then three and we just took the aluminum engine mount off the engine so that we can actually lift our engine mount off. So I don't think we'll be able to get this thing out of here, but I don't really care if we can shove it up out of the way somewhere. Enough just so we can lift our pillow mount up and out, like you can see there. I'm cool with that. So now I gotta figure out how to get that thing out of there, but I'd rather do that than uh, take the intake manifold off. So we'll figure out how to get that origami out of there, but we will get it out. All right, so we took the mono leaf out. In order to do that, we had to disconnect the brake line we took off the caliper and then we took out our upper A-arms out of there and then lowered these and just make sure you support that crazy monoleaf with your support and we ended up lowering it enough that we took it out this way and then down and now we are about to pass that motor mount through here. Hey, this thing is in two pieces you guys. So I gotta manipulate it through here without getting a face full of sand but Make sure we go around this wire. Ooh, look at this. Ew. Check this out, you guys. Look at that. It is in two pieces. It's talking. Hi, I need it to be changed. Welcome to the Muppet Show. Oh my God. 
It's almost about to come apart, it looks like. That is insane. It's fine. We can still do some track days with that. It's good. <laughs> All right, I cannot get over how mangled that is, you guys. That is insane. Like, literally, complete separation for tons of time for it to be polished on both sides like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, put our Hinson one in. Should be pretty straightforward. It's a lot smaller to navigate in through here as well. And then once it's in here, I'm gonna pass it through here and then we can go ahead, put it in, put our bracket back on the block and set it back down on top. Okay, so your experience might be a little bit different, but this has headers on it. So I don't have as much room on this side to get my hand up through there. You might choose to drop the header on this side, or if you have the original manifold, you might have enough clearance, but either way, I'm trying to do it without removing the manifold or the header. And I am right now with some extensions. I managed to get the 18 mil nut from the top there. So I got that one off. Also, somebody has disconnected the AC compressor. It's just sitting there. So I figured, and it looks like it's all seized up anyway. So I'm gonna attempt to maybe remove it. I'm not sure. I've seen people take it out the back with removing the exhaust. I'm gonna try since I have the monoleaf out to see if I can drop it through that hole there. If I can manage to get it out there, then I can also squeeze some of this other stuff out through here. I think I could probably, if I really want to, get the mount out one way or another. The rigid, or the new mount that we're putting in there, I'll definitely have enough room, but I'll let you guys know kind of what occurs as I go on, but I am gonna be taking out the AC compressor. I don't expect you guys to take out your AC compressor, but either way, you're either gonna have to drop the manifold to get this out. If you have this type of header, uh, you might have to remove it. Or if you can, uh, if you guys figure out another way to get it out, drop, uh, drop a comment in the comments down below. Hopefully it helps somebody out. But anyways, let me uh, continue and I'll tell you guys what I end up doing here. All right, so like I mentioned, I don't expect you guys to do this the same way, but ended up taking out this bracket. My AC compressor is still up there. I disconnected it. Like I said, the AC lines were already removed from this because it was uh, used as a track car. So this comes out through that hole. And then I'm hoping this will also come out through here. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be in for a lot more work, but we shall see. I don't know if anybody's already tried this or not. Possibly, I think if I lift the engine up, which I don't have right now, if I lift the engine up, I'm guessing it's gonna come out of this hole here. So I've got this nut removed and the one on the top there. So let me try lifting the engine up and then I'm hoping I can sneak this through here. Lifted up the engine a little bit and thankfully this will come out through here. So it's gonna have to manipulate it a little bit. Might have to lift it up a tiny bit more. <laughs> There's that stud still in there. So let me get that out of there but you guys can see it will come out here. All right, so I just had to rotate it and play with it but it came right out through this. So now we've got tons of working room here to get this mount out. So. I might even be able to, eh, can almost get this out, but probably end up just taking out three bolts, you guys. I got tons of room to get my hands in here, so I'll take out those three bolts, take it off the actual engine. This saves us having to take the intake manifold off. So I'll take those three bolts out and then we'll get this out. All right, so remove the three bolts. You can gain access to all three bolts right here, you guys, super easy. You can see there, one, two with the swivel right there, and then three, Boom, right there. So, got those three out. Now we can go over here, lift this off. I still have a bunch of bolts kind of floating in around here, but I'm guessing this mount's gonna be brutal. Tons of room to access here. Nasty, this thing is dirty. Maybe the engine's been out at one point or another because it does have R stamped on the engine mount. I wonder if this engine has been replaced. They definitely didn't replace the engine mounts when they did all that though. This one. Oh my. That one's even more cooked than the other one. Look at that one. Sheesh. Let me take off the little heat shield. We got to get a better look at this thing. You guys are getting first impressions here. Wow. That is beyond mangled. <laughs> look at that. Complete separation. Holy, all right, well, I guess I don't have to worry about my engine mounts, my new ones being shorter. Holy, 
So there's the look. You guys can probably see more than I can. I got a couple bolts, I think, up here still. A little bit of hardware. I ain't end up taking this whole thing out and pressure washing it at some point, but I just want to get these engine mounts in here to see if my transmission issue is resolved this way. So right now I'm having issues with the car popping out of first gear. And I'm wondering if it's because the engine's rocking all in the chassis. Might be wishful thinking, but hopefully. Hopefully it might be something simple, I'm hoping. But either way, these got to get changed out. So let me go ahead and get the new ones in there, and uh, we'll lower the engine back down. All right, so both mounts are in. I just went ahead, put that in there. And again, the sequence was to put the mount in and then slip this aluminum piece of bolts to the block in on top, put the bolts into the block, and then tighten everything down. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So both sides are in, both sides are tight, but rather than me showing you all this boring stuff as far as putting this all back together, I wanna move on to the rear transmission mount. So this one here, again, is factory. I'm sure it's gonna be probably equally as obliterated. Luckily, none of this stuff seems to be in the original location, which uh, I'll take because that means less stuff I have to move out of the way since all this stuff is kind of just dangling back here. Probably has been serviced at one point. But let's go ahead. It looks like we've got two bolts under here. So we gotta remove these two nuts. Of course, we'll lift up the rear diff and hopefully we can squeak this guy in here. So let me go ahead, um, start loosening stuff, show you guys what I get into. But essentially I'm gonna loosen these bolts off we got two bolts that go into there too, and we'll lift this up, be able to squeak that out, but I'll show you guys once I get to that point. All right, so this one was a hell of a lot easier than the front. So all I did was take off the two nuts right there, take out the two bolts, and just lifted the transmission up there. That's kind of the easiest spot to get in because a little bit uh, clustered through here, so I just lifted it off of this main point there. And now it looks like I should be able to get this guy out of here also I did want to mention too you'll notice that I kept the stand in the front I know there's a lot of mess down there but um, with these cars being 50 50 weight distribution you don't want to play around with it so I've got the front one supporting since I'm kind of essentially removing a lot of weight or relieving a lot of weight from the rear and same thing when I did the front I always had this stand in the back but anyways there's this mount it doesn't look nearly as bad as the engine mount but looks as old as the engine mount well, it's got some cracking in there so even though it's not as separated as the engine mount. Definitely not a bad idea to replace it. So let's go ahead and uh, let me figure out the other one. I think I gotta do some hardware stuff again. These were used mounts that I picked up. Um, somebody was upgrading to solid mounts. So let me mess with that and then I'll show you guys. All right, so mine is used, but this goes in the same way that the stock one came out. So it's gonna have the two posts on it. You rotate it in feed it through. You are going to have to manipulate your brake lines, however you so choose. Um, I also am probably going to do, I guess there's some sort of brake mod that you can do with the C5 stuff where you can reroute them so that when you're dropping the rear cradle, it's not as much of a pain in the butt. So I'm not sure what that is. I'm still uh, getting used to this whole C5 chassis deal, but i uh, probably end up doing that at some point. So what I'm going to do is there's less room to work with you guys can see here it's kind of hard to see a little less room to work with right here so I'm gonna lift this up tighten up my hardware that goes into the actual diff and then we will put this down and tighten up these nuts as well so let me do that but this one is way easier than the front all right wasn't gonna show you guys this because the shop is kind of a disaster right now just with uh, all the projects going on and what I'm currently doing but I originally put these bolts in because it was missing these two bolts that go in there. Originally I put in these and then I had no way of getting a Torx bit in there to actually tighten them up without getting a wrench in on the side. But the right size bolt, GM bolt, didn't fit into the recess. So I just want to show you guys a little trick that I uh, use to make that happen. So let me show you this little trick nothing special you can do this against the grinder or anything but I just put the bolt into a drill and I'm effectively shaving the washer portion of it down so that it will fit in there Ooh. 
so close, a little more. All right, so ended up getting this thing in here, you guys. Like I mentioned, it is pretty tight through here. You actually do want to, at least in my experience, run your brake lines underneath because if you run them up over top, they have a tendency to want to touch your CVs right there. So just double check that if you manipulated the line in any which way, but it does seem to favor going below this bracket. And then it worked out beautifully right there. You're able to get in a 15 inch wrench. That's what I was talking about. It's like super, super tight to try to get in there. One thing as well too, you'll notice that there was a little dampener there. I did have to remove that because it interferes with this. Um, I didn't get any instructions with it. I just kind of winged it, but ended up working out. So had to remove the dampener. It's just held on by two 13 mil bolts and then that comes off and out of your way. So everything is installed. We've got our hardware tightened down here. This is all tight, but I am going to end the video here because I already know you guys, I've watched plenty of DIY videos myself. And as soon as you figure out how to take it apart, you guys pretty much know how to put it back together. But what I am gonna be working on, we're doing a ton of stuff to this car. If you guys have C5s, you guys are interested, check out both channels. We've got two channels, Boosted Motorsports and Boosted Motorsports 2. We're posting content for all of our vehicles on both. But we've done this Hooker Blackheart exhaust. We've got a bunch of stuff, suspension upgrades, sway bar upgrades, Delrin bushings for all of the control arms. We're doing pretty much a ton of stuff to this. We've already done brake upgrades, anything and everything you pretty much do to C5, we're gonna be doing on this. Right now I'm about to tear out the front power steering rack if you guys are curious on that process. Uh, I'm gonna take it out because it is completely leaking everywhere. So I've got a rebuild kit, which if you guys don't know, you can buy a rebuild kit. So I'm gonna try our luck with the rebuild kit and uh, see how it goes. We're gonna tackle that right now. So if you guys are interested, go check out that video. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. I'll link everything that I use down in the description down below if you guys wanna check that out. And we'll see you guys on the next video.